The 1985 World Series began on October 19 and ended on October 27. The American League champions Kansas City Royals played the National League champions St. Louis Cardinals, with the Royals upsetting the heavily favored Cardinals in seven games. The series was popularly known as the Show Me Series or the I-70 Showdown Series, as both cities are in the state of Missouri which is nicknamed the Show Me State and are connected by Interstate 70. The Cardinals won the National League East Division by three games over the New York Mets, then defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers four games to two in the National League Championship Series. The Royals won the American League West Division by one game over the California Angels, then defeated the Toronto Blue Jays four games to three in the American League Championship Series. The Cardinals were seeking to win their NI leading 10th World Series title, while the Royals were seeking their first World Series title. The Royals were completing one of the most successful decades by any expansion team, with six division titles and two pennants from 1976 to 1985. This was the first World Series in which all games were played at night. Also, this was the first World Series to feature television commentator Tim McCarver, who called the games for ABC with Al Michaels and Jim Palmer. Howard Kozel was originally scheduled to be in the booth with Michaels and Palmer, but was removed from his assignment just prior to Game 1 because of the controversy surrounding his book One Never Played the Game. McCarver would go on to call a record 2 4 World Series telecasts for various networks. This was the second Missouri only World Series, with the first being the 1944 World Series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the St. Louis Browns, the Browns later moving and becoming the Baltimore Orioles. The 1985 World Series marked the fifth time in World Series history that a team came back from a three games to one deficit to win a championship, and the first in which that team lost the first two games of the series at home. Brett Saberhagen's victories in games three and seven, with him allowing only a single run on both starts, earned him the World Series Most Valuable Player Award. This was the last World Series in which the designated hitter was not used in an American League baseball park. From 1976 to 1985, in even-numbered years, the DH would be used in all games. In odd-numbered years, like this World Series, the pitchers from both were required to bat for themselves throughout the series. Beginning with the next World Series, the DH rule would be used only in games played at the American League Representatives Park. The Royals became World Series champions for the first time in their history. They would return to the series in 2014, in which they played the 2014 World Series against the San Francisco Giants but lost in seven games. A year later in the 2015 World Series, the Royals would win their second title against the New York Mets. Al Kansas City Royals 4 vs. NI Street. Louis Cardinals 3. Topic Matchups Topic Game One When Lonnie Smith led off for the Royals, he became the first player in MLB history to be traded from a team the St. Louis Cardinals during a season and play against that team in the World Series the same season. John Tudor scattered seven hits in six and two-thirds innings for the Cards and won with relief help from Todd Worrell. The Royals struck first in the second on Steve Balboni's RBI single with runners on first and second, but the Cardinals tied it off of Danny Jackson in the third on Willie McGee's RBI ground out with runners on second and third. Next inning, Tito Landrum doubled with one out, then scored on late season acquisition Cesar Cedeno's RBI double to give Jackson the loss despite Jackson throwing seven innings of two run ball. The Cardinals padded their lead in the ninth off of Dan Quisenbury when Tom Hare singled to lead off and scored on Jack Clark's double. This was the first Saturday night game in World Series history. The series began on a Saturday from 1969 through 1976, and again from 1985 through 2006, with the exception of 1990, which began on a Tuesday night. Topic Game Two. The Royals went up 2–0 in the fourth off of Danny Cox when Willie Wilson hit a lead-off single that was followed by back-to-back -back RBI doubles by George Brett and Frank White. 
However Charlie Librant continued a history of tough luck in the postseason. The previous year, he had lost Game 3 of the 1984 ALCS, 1–0, to the Detroit Tigers when he pitched a three-hit complete game. He lost Game 4 in the 1985 ALCS in the ninth inning. And clinging to a two-run lead in the ninth, manager Dick Hauser opted to not send in his relief ace Dan Quisenberry to close out the game. Librant allowed a lead-off double to Willie McGee, then only one out from tying the series at one apiece when he allowed an RBI single to Jack Clark. After a double and walk loaded the bases, Terry Pendleton cleared them with a double and gave the Cardinals a 4–2 lead. Quisenberry came in and after he walked Darrell Porter he got out of the inning. Jeff Latty earned a save with a scoreless bottom of the inning. The Cardinals' four-run ninth would be the only inning in the series in which they scored more than one run. Topic: <laughs> Game Three. The Royals got back into the series by riding ace Brett Saberhagen to a six-to-one victory against 20-game winner Joaquin Andujar. Saberhagen flashed messages on the television screen to his pregnant wife who was due to give birth any day. She eventually gave birth on October 26 in Game 6. The Royals went up 2–0 in the fourth on Lonnie Smith's two-run double that scored Jim Sundberg and Buddy Biancolana, who had walked and singled, respectively. Royals second baseman Frank White made history by becoming the first second baseman in the history of the World Series to hit in the cleanup spot in the batting order. White came through with a two-run home run off of Andujar in the fifth after George Brett got on base. The Cardinals scored their only run of the game in the sixth off of Brett Saberhagen on consecutive singles by Ozzie Smith, Tom Hare, and Jack Clark. The Royals padded their lead in the seventh off of Ricky Horton when George Brett drew a lead-off walk, moved to second on a balk, then scored on White's double. Two outs later, White scored on Buddy Biancolana's single to cap the scoring. <laughs> Game 4 John Tudor's complete game shutout put the Cardinals on the verge of winning their second World Series in four years. Tito Landrum, only playing due to a tarp injury to Vince Coleman, continued to make his case for series MVP with a home run in the second off a Bud Black. Next inning, Willie McGee homered also to make it 2–0 Cardinals, who added to their lead in the fifth when Terry Pendleton tripled with one out and scored on Black's throwing error on Tom Nieto's bunt attempt. Topic. Game 5 Entering this game, the Royals were 3–0 in must-win games in playoff elimination games. They improved their record to 4–0 with a decisive victory over the Cardinals, again by the score of 6–1. The Royals struck first on Frank White's ground out with runners on second and third in the top of the first off of Bob Forsh, but the Cardinals tied it off of Danny Jackson in the bottom half on back-to-back two-out doubles by Tom Hare and Jack Clark. However, they would not score after that. The Royals broke the game open in the second when light-hitting Buddy Biancolana singled to score Jim Sundberg, who doubled with one out. After Lonnie Smith walked, Willie Wilson tripled home both runs to make it 4–1. The Royals added to their lead in the eight off of Jeff Laddie on shortstop Ozzie Smith's throwing error on Danny Jackson's ground ball, then in the ninth on Pat Sheridan's RBI double. Jackson was the winning pitcher, following the same formula and pitching rotation as the Royals did in the ALCS where Jackson also won Game 5. Jackson threw a complete game. <laughs> game 6 A pitcher's duel unfolded between Danny Cox and Charlie Librant, the tough luck loser in Game 2. The game was marked by controversy. In the fourth inning of the scoreless game, the Royals' Frank White appeared to have stolen second base, but was ruled out in a questionable call. The batter, Pat Sheridan, hit a single to right field two pitches later. This would have likely given the Royals a 1–0 lead had White been called safe. Instead, Librant and Cox traded scoreless innings until the eighth, when pinch hitter Brian Harper singled home Terry Pendleton, who had singled earlier, to give the Cardinals a 1–0 lead. 
Whitey Herzog called on rookie reliever Todd Worrell to pitch the ninth. The first batter, pinch hitter Jorge Orta, sent a chopping bouncer to the right of Jack Clark. He tossed to Worrell, who tagged the bag ahead of Orta, but Clark's toss was behind Worrell and it allowed the running Orta to start to come between umpire Don Denkinger and his view of the lunging Worrell's glove. Denkinger called Orta safe. Replays indicated that Orta should have been called out, and an argument ensued on the field. The Cardinals argued briefly but as crew chief and believing he had made the correct call, Denkinger would not reverse it. Orta remained at first. In his book You're Missing a Great Game, Herzog wrote that he later wished he had asked Commissioner Peter Uberth, who was in attendance, to overrule the call and declare Orta out. If Uberth had refused to do so, Herzog would have pulled his team from the field and forfeited the game. Instead of one out and no one on, the Royals now had no outs and a runner on first for batter Steve Balboni. Balboni lifted a pop-up in foul territory along the edge of the first base dugout. Jack Clark, who had only recently made the transition from right field to first base that season, lost track of the ball as he looked to find the dugout and the ball dropped on the top step of the dugout. Balboni then singled two pitches later, putting runners at first and second with nobody out. Onyx Concepcion was sent in as a pinch runner for the slow-footed Balboni. Catcher Jim Sundberg attempted to sacrifice the runners over, but he failed. With two strikes he bunted anyway and it was sent back to the pitcher and was fielded by Worrell who threw to third for the force out of Orta. Porter then allowed a passed ball allowing Concepcion and Sundberg to advance to third and second, respectively. With first base now open and two runners in scoring position, Herzog then chose to walk Royals pinch hitter Hal McRae to set up a potential double play. McRae would be replaced by the faster John Wathen to pinch run to avoid a potential double play. With the bases loaded and one out, pinch hitter Dane Iorg blooped a single to right field. Pinch runner Onyx Concepcion scored the tying run and Sunberg approached the plate with the winning run. Right fielder Andy Van Slyke's throw was on the money, but Porter was unable to tag Sunberg before he slid home safely with the game-winning run. The Royals celebrated the rally, and mobbed home plate. The Cardinals went to their dressing rooms, only to find champagne waiting for them and plastic over their lockers in anticipation for the celebration. Denkinger stated that he still believed he had made the right call until he later met with Commissioner Peter Uberth after the game and had the opportunity to see the replay himself. He would later claim that he was waiting to hear the ball land in Worrell's glove while watching the bag for Orta's foot. Due to the crowd noise in Royal Stadium, he ruled Orta safe because he never heard Worrell catch the ball. I was in good position, but Worrell is tall, the throw was high, and I couldn't watch his glove and his feet at the same time." Denkinger told Sports Illustrated, "...it was a soft toss, and there was so much crowd noise, I couldn't hear the ball hit the glove." Denkinger was also scheduled to be the home plate umpire in Game 7. <laughs> Game 7. One night after becoming a father, Brett Saberhagen tossed a five-hitter and got all the offense he needed when Darrell Motley homered to left off John Tudor in the second inning, after a walk to Steve Balboni. In the third, Lonnie Smith led off with a walk, and with one out George Brett hit an accidental infield single. After a double steal, Tudor issued walks to Frank White and Jim Sundberg, making it 3–0. Tudor was replaced with Bill Campbell after only two and a third innings. Balboni singled to left off Campbell for two runs to make it 5–0. Tudor walked four and was charged with all five runs. In the dugout, he angrily punched an electrical fan, cutting his pitching hand. The Royals blew the game open in the bottom of the fifth. A succession of five Cardinal pitchers allowed six Royals runs, five coming after two were out. Campbell gave up a single to Sundberg and was immediately replaced by Jeff Latty, who allowed four runs before being replaced by Ricky Horton. However, after Horton gave up a single to Brett, Herzog immediately replaced him with the volatile Joaquin Anduha, normally a starter but pressed into relief. Anduha allowed an RBI single to Frank White to increase the Royals' lead to 10–0 before the Cardinals came completely unglued. 
With Sundberg at the plate, the Royals had batted around, and Duhar twice charged home plate umpire Denkinger to disagree with his strike zone. First, Denkinger called an Anduhar pitcher ball. Herzog, who had been berating Denkinger for most of the game, rushed from the dugout to defend Anduhar, and was ejected reportedly after saying to Denkinger, We wouldn't even be here if you hadn't missed the fucking call last night. According to Denkinger, he replied, Well, if you guys weren't hitting .120 in this World Series, we wouldn't be here. The next pitch was also called a ball, and Denkinger ejected Anduha, who again lost his cool and charged at Denkinger. It took three teammates to restrain him and get him off the field. Replays showed both pitchers were clearly inside and Al Michaels and Jim Palmer both acknowledged the fact. Anduha was suspended for the first ten games of the 1986 season for his outburst. Although it has been rumored that Herzog sent in Anduha specifically to bait Denkinger, Herzog himself has said several times Anduha was the only pitcher who still had anything left in his arm. After the ejection, Bob Forsch got out of the fifth inning nightmare and he and Ken Daly kept the Royals off the scoreboard, but it was not enough as the Cardinals could not score any runs against Saberhagen. The Royals became the first team ever to win the World Series after dropping games 1 and 2 at home. Next year the New York Mets accomplished the same feat by defeating the Boston Red Sox in seven games. In the 1996 World Series, the New York Yankees lost their first two games at home against the defending 1995 World Series champion Atlanta Braves before winning four straight to claim the title. The Royals also were the fifth team to come back from a three games to one deficit to win a best of seven World Series, the others being the 1925 Pittsburgh Pirates, 1958 New York Yankees, 1968 Detroit Tigers, the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates, and the 2016 Chicago Cubs. The 85 Royals had previously come back from a three games to one deficit to win the American League Championship Series against the Toronto Blue Jays. The six elimination games won by the Royals represent a major league record for a single postseason, a record which would later be equaled by the 2012 San Francisco Giants. The Cardinals' .185 batting average was the lowest for a seven-game World Series until the New York Yankees hit 183 in the 2001 World Series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Cardinals also scored only 13 total runs an all-time low for a seven-game series—scoring only once in the final 26 innings of the series. If they had held on for the win in Game 6, they still would have been outscored in the series 15–13. The Royals did not play in another postseason game until the 2014 American League Wild Card game. <laughs> Composite box 1985 World Series 4 to 3 Kansas City Royals AL over St. Louis Cardinals NL Topic Notes Topic See also 1985 Japan Series